Uh, good evening and thanks for joining us. You're watching ABS and this is the Evening News. I am Ifanaya Amafili. And our headlines for today. Anambra State Government places 5 million Naira reward on information that would lead to apprehending killers of Nibo Presidential General Iboka. Anambra State Police Command arrests 151 persons for suspected cultism. Senate rejects bills seeking to phase out petrol cars. And on the foreign scene, Egypt's parliament finally approves amendments that may extend President al-Sisi's stay in power. And we'll start with the news in details. Governor Willie Obiano has placed a 5 million naira reward on anybody or group that would assist in apprehending the killers of the President General of Nemo in Jikoka Council area, Chief Frank Anthony Iboka. A statement signed by the Commissioner for Information and Public Enlightenment, Mr. C. Don Adinuba. The Governor directed the state's police commissioner as well as heads of other security agencies in the state to immediately track the killers and bring them to justice. The statement further said nobody would commit such crime in any part of the state and go scot-free. An earlier statement by the police command in the state confirmed the gruesome murder of the former lawmaker and mayor of Injikoka local government area near the Oye Nimo market inside his car. According to a police statement signed by the police public relations officer, Haruna Mohammed, investigations have commenced to determine those behind the killing, adding that Chief Iboka was shot at close range with over 20 live expended bullets found at the scene of the murder. A number of state government has banned every form of street trading and hawking in all streets, major roads and highways in the state. A statement released by the Office of the Commissioner for Trade and Commerce, Mr. Kristen Madubuko, the ban is to enhance easy flow of traffic improve environmental sanitation and aesthetic. The statement said that anyone caught flouting the ban will be prosecuted and urged all the residents of the state to support the efforts of the state government towards promoting a socially stable and sustainable environment. Meanwhile, the state police command says it has under her custody a total of 151 suspected cultists arrested from across the state in the last two weeks. According to a press statement signed by the command's police public relations officer, Mr. Haruna Mohammed, the command special anti-cultism unit, special anti-robbery squad SARS, and divisional police had carried out the raids where they also recovered heavy weapons and suspected Indian hem. A breakdown of the raids shows that 16 suspected cultists were arrested at Okija, 12 at Nanka, 11 at Nkwele, 9 suspects arrested at Ogidi. Further breakdown shows that 8 suspects were arrested at Oka, 14 at Ajali and Oko Axis, and 18 at Enugu, Enuguku, Nimo and Nisei Axis. 12 suspects were arrested at Fege and Awada, 13 at Inland Town, Onicha while four and seven suspects were arrested at Achala and Orom, respectively. The police team arrested three suspects at Obonike, 15 at Amobia, and nine at Ukulu and Upo Axis. During the raid, three machets, four axes, two barrettes, and some quantities of dry leaves suspected to be Indian hem were recovered. Meanwhile, out of the 151 suspects arrested so far, 40 have confessed to the crime and charged to court. 62 suspects were screened and released. 20 suspects were under age and placed under supervision, while 29 others are undergoing investigation. The command implores the public to report any suspicious person or movement to the nearest police station or call emergency number 070-3919 Four three three two for prompt response. 
Over 100 beggars, mentally challenged people, have been removed from parts of Onicha and Oka by the Anambra state government. The operation was carried out by a joint tax force led by the Ministry of Social Welfare, Children and Women's Affairs. And our correspondent, Daniel Ezeigwe, monitored the exercise and now reports. The beggars operating at Main Market, Bridgehead, Upper Iweka, and Unisic Junction, Oka, were mostly women, most of whom failed their impairments and used hired children to carry out their business, with a woman using as many as four kids. The raid, which began last year, is part of the initiative of the Anambra State Government to rid the streets of the state of beggars and mentally challenged, with some of the mentally impaired persons taken to the Integer Rehabilitation Center for treatment and reconnection with their families. The Commissioner for Transport, Honorable Uche Nokafo, who also took part in the exercise, said the present leadership of Governor Uri Obiano was key on absolute sanity on major parts of the state and noted that those picked up would be examined to sort out the genuinely sick ones from the fakers. What they are doing here is affecting the future of our country. What we are trying to do is to secure the future of our country by making sure we take care of their parents and also send the children back to school. For the Commissioner for Social Welfare, Children and Women Affairs, Lady Indidemezuo, whose ministry is spearheading the activity, the apprehended beggars who are not from Anambra State will be officially repatriated to their home states while sustained efforts are on ground to ensure that those picked up will not go back to the streets. The most annoying part of the whole thing is that half of them are from the river, for instance, want to take them back to their home states through the Ministry of Women Affairs of the various states. So that is exactly what we're doing. The commissioner also provided a wheelchair for one of the child beggars who is working impaired in Oka, Daniel Ezigwe, ABS News. The Anambra state government has arrested another three persons over illegal ticket sales, tax and levy collections. The alleged illegal tax collectors who aged between 45 and 50 operate within the Ecolobia market access. Our correspondent Emmanuel Okonkwo tells us more. The arrest carried out by the State Ministry of Trade, Commerce and Industry is in line with the state government's directive and efforts to fight against the frauding of traders in markets across the state by hoodlums who claim to be working for the government or private bodies. Addressing newsmen at the Jerome Udoji Secretariat, Oka, shortly after the exercise, the State Commissioner for Trade, Commerce and Industry, Dr. Christian Madubuko, who described the act as a criminal one, said that the ministry has handed them over to police and the suspects would immediately be charged to court. Dr. Madubuko disclosed that the state government decided to cancel payment of all levies for three months in markets around the state to harness the collection of internally generated revenue for optimal returns, regretting that the state has lost huge amount of money to illegal tax collectors, which according to him has led to continuous dwindling of the state IGR. He said that over 700 persons have been prosecuted already by the state government over the illegal act and explained that it will continue to do so until sanity is brought to the system. We are custom the traders and they start money from them and when you ask them they will begin to uh, to bring out uh, all kinds of authority letters so of these letters we are not authorized by the state government so these are the things we are fighting to stop and for us to get it right we must deal ruthlessly with anybody found to be doing that speaking the leader of the team Mr. Francis Eze, who pleaded not guilty, explained that he bought the land at 5.2 million naira and has invested over 3 million naira in building over 22 stores on it. He explained that he rented it out to oil dealers in the area who were formerly staying along the expressway, claiming that he has authorization from the Aguata local government to collect dues and levies. To local government, uh, well, local government, uh, Ministry of Trade and Commerce, and I got uh, over my approval. But they have been approved. I just the outcome. From Jerome Udoji Secretariat in Oka, I am Emmanuel Okonkwo reporting for ABS News. In a similar development, the Anambra State Government, through the Ministry of Environment, has arrested eight persons over indiscriminate washing of cars along the Enugu. Onicha Expressway. Emmanuel Okunko was there and now reports.
The Ministry of Environment, in collaboration with the Anambra Traffic Management Agency, ATMA, arrested the people for allegedly contributing to the damaging of the road with water which flows from the car wash outfit to the main road, creating potholes on the road. Speaking, the Commissioner for Environment, architect Michael Konkwo, stated that the arrest is in line with the state government's efforts towards putting an end to artificial causes of erosion in the state, regretting that those arrested could not adhere to directives of the government, as according to him, they have been severally warned before the arrest, explaining that such practice has claimed lives along the expressway. Architect Tokonho disclosed that they will be charged to court to serve as a deterrent to others. This is a typical example. We had just raided and uh, arrested the people operating um, car wash illegally because they cited it without approval and as such they will be messing up uh, notoriously at the corner of Enuguanish Expressway and there's to Biako, a place that has been known to cause a lot of accidents. And part of it is because they dig hole with their car wash uh, water being um, channeled into the road. You know, so they cause potholes. Responding, the manager of the car wash, Mr. Chukunwike Ezenwa, who admitted that they have received several warnings from the government on the issue, pleaded for forgiveness, saying that they have commenced rechanneling of the drainage so as to prevent water from entering the main road. So they came this morning and said that we are, our water is going out. out of, we, told, we, said, we told them that it is not our water, it is the rain that fall yesterday. Pleading to them that it is not that we are the cause, but the problem is that the, the drainage is blocked. Even though we do not wash car there, that water we always goes out because you didn't see a place to enter. Those arrested have been handed over to the Nigeria police and will be charged to court. From the Jerome Doji Sectorate in Oka, I am Emmanuel Okonkwo reporting for ABS News. Still to come, Senate rejects bills seeking to phase out petrol cars. And on the foreign scene, Egypt's parliament finally approves amendments that may extend President al-Sisi's stay in power. Do stay with us. We'll be back shortly. History shows Diamond shared the dream to build more than just a bank, bringing the online revolution to Nigeria and becoming part of the networked society, helping to lift the country and continent out of recession to enrich its people too. Now, with our two banks fused together, we can help more move up the social ladder and help future generations make more of their lives, whoever and wherever they are. A new bond to help unleash the potential in every African who banks with us. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. The Senate has rejected a bill seeking to phase out the use of petrol powered cars in Nigeria and adopt those powered by electricity. Senator representing Bielsa East, Senator Ben Murray Bruce, had argued that it would be cheaper to use electric powered cars than the current petrol cars being used in Nigeria. He said Nigeria has been spending over one trillion naira subsidizing petrol usage in Nigeria, declaring that with electric cars, false subsidy will be a thing of the past. However, opposing the bill, the Deputy Senate President, Ike Ekweremadu, Senator Jibril Barrow and Senator Andrew Uchindu spoke against the bill, noting that Nigerians should not be forced to use what may become above their means. Senator Bruce later reheld the bill. The United States Consulate General John Bray has described Nigeria's present economic challenges and future outlook as daunting in view of his explosive population projected to be 450 million by 2050. The U.S. envoy linked Nigeria's security status and overall stability to its economic challenges while delivering a keynote speech at the Securex West African Conference in Lagos. Citing the National Bureau of Statistics, Bray said the number of unemployed youths in the country put at 13.2 million as of 2018 was alarming, 
adding that the rise of militancy in the northeast, southeast and south-south correlated directly to the number of idle youths in the country. He noted that the country was in urgent need of economic diversification, which could be achieved through investment in agriculture and the entertainment industry. Moving over to the foreign scene, Egypt's parliament has approved amendments to the constitution that could keep President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi in power until 2030. The reform must still be endorsed in a referendum which, if approved, could lengthen the country's presidential term to six years, including Sisi's current term. President al-Sisi is due to stand down in 2022, but the new amendment will extend his term to 2024 and allow him to run one more time. Winning could lead to another six years in power. The former general became president in 2014 after a coup in the previous year. He was re-elected in 2018 with 97.8% of the vote, but many opposing candidates were jailed or pressured to stand down. Egypt's parliament is dominated by Sisi supporters and voted 531 to 22 in favor of the constitutional amendments. They say changes are needed to provide more time to complete major development projects and economic reforms. Moving over to sports, Bayern Munich will offer veteran striker Claudio Pizarro a role as club ambassador once the evergreen 40-year-old Peruvian finally ends his playing career. Club CEO Karl Hens Romeniger said today, in his lengthy career in Germany, Pizarro has made 327 appearances for Bayern, as well as 296 for current club Warden Berman. A well-loved figure at both clubs, he is currently on his fourth spell at Berman and is expected to end his playing career either this summer or in the end of next season. Pizarro is the second highest scoring foreigner in Bundles Liga's history with 195 goals in 468 league appearances. Only Bayern's Robert Lewandowski, currently on 201 goals, has scored more than that in German's top flights. Now, don't forget that you can follow our news and programs on ABS from any part of the world simply by liking our Facebook page, which is ABS Radio TV, ABS Radio Television, or subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash ABS Radio TV online. Follow us on our Twitter handle at ABS Radio TV and on Instagram at ABS Radio TV. You can also log on to our website, which is www.absradiotv.com. Before we end the news this evening, we'll go to the headlines once more. Anambra State Government has placed 5 million Naira reward on information that would lead to the apprehending of the killers of Nemo President General Iboka. Anambra State Police Command has arrested 151 persons for suspected cultism. Senate has rejected bills seeking to phase out petrol cars. And on the foreign scene, Egypt's parliament finally has approved amendments that may extend President al-Sisi's stay in power. And with that, we end the news this evening. Many thanks for being with us. I am Ifunaya Amafli. Have a pleasant evening.